for number 13. I'm here in Adams County, Pennsylvania, rather than Rappahannock County, Virginia. And I'm working on some kind of Caravage-esque lighting scheme. I'm all 3D and shit. All right. CRISPR Roots 13. Let's talk about Wonder Women of Country. That's Kelly Willis, Melissa Carper, and Brennan Lee. Brennan Lee. Lee? L-E-I-G-H. I I should look that up. Lee. 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 Um, And Armchair Boogie. Some sort of jam band, loose quasi-bluegrass or string band music, I guess you'd say. Uh, All right. So let's talk about Wonder Women of Country. Superheroes, man. And it's true. Of these three. Uh, I guess I've been a fan of Kelly Willis's for a long time. Ever since I was living in Nashville. And she was trying to make it in Nashville around the late 80s. Uh, you know, her videos were on CMT. And I kind of fell for her. And I really fell for her singing. At first it didn't seem that... I. I I don't know. I don't know what to say about it, but it, her voice breaks in a country way on almost every note. Uh, she's an extremely distinctive singer, Kelly Willis, and she didn't really, um, she never made it. She should have been a number one, you know, uh, hit maker, but she topped out near the bottom of the charts over and over again. I'm not sure what happened to Kelly Willis. But boy, when you hear her now, when I hear her now, she sounds classic to me. At this point, it's like hearing someone like Reba McIntyre from the same period or something like, you know, like, okay, well, there is a voice that you can't think country without. Yeah. All right. So at this point, Kelly Wilson's voice is one of the paradigm instruments of country music for me. And I'm always glad to hear it. I loved her duet album with her husband, Bruce Robeson, from a few years ago. That was in my top 10, whatever year that was, maybe 19. Uh, just what a great album that was. And uh, so, but this is cool what she's doing now. All right. I like this idea of Wonder Women of Country. I mean, like the, the high women, right? Uh, but this is, this is people who have struggled more, I guess you'd say, actually. Uh, and I think this is really cool. So I just try to remind you or uh, show you what uh, Kelly Willis sounds like. It's the, I think there's a lot more to be done by Wonder Women and Country, by these three. I'd like to see us more collaborative. It's kind of two songs, two songs, two songs with different people in the lead. I think it could be more, I mean, the harmonies are lovely. And there could be more harmonies, duets, you know, etc., uh, still, so, uh, this is a six song EP. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, all right. So here's how Kelly Willis sings a country song as it should be sung. Another Broken Heart by the Wonder Women of Country. I love that. Um, it's a Kelly Willis song, you know. Um, again, I would like to maybe explore this as more of a group in a certain way. 
Melissa Carper is a really interesting looking person, an interesting sounding person. Uh, let's, um, this is how she sounds. Melissa Carper. pretty traditional approach now the lovely mandolin on that cut i think probably is played by brennan lee uh lay l-e-i-g-h again uh who's a really fascinating figure who i didn't know much about i guess i'd heard a couple of the albums previewed them maybe uh she's got a collaborative album with asleep at the wheel really fun cool western swing album uh with other novelty stuff going on too uh, she's got a lovely song, a lovely album of songs of Lefty Frizzell. That's a pretty good idea, except they're all about mama. So, and, and I mean, it's really intensely traditional and an interesting, again, as I say sometimes, almost scholarly approach to the history of country music, uh, and a lovely multi-instrumentalist, uh, and an interesting, somewhat eccentric, uh, or pitchy singer. Uh, but in a good way, I think. I've been listening to a bunch of Brennan Lee the last uh, day or two. Um, she sounds like this. Faded blue jeans with the orange seams The only ones I ever wore Like so many pretty sweet. This is so Austin. I know these people met in Austin. This couldn't be more Austin. I just think feel Brennan Lee is so Austin. And Kelly Willis is so Austin. All right. Uh, nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah. Oh, I haven't been to Austin in 15 years. Uh, I hear it's uh, gotten pretty, pretty, keep Austin weird is too late, I think. All right. Um, that is Wonder Women of country and i think this got a lot of a lot of play as a tour as albums as all kinds of collaboration with imitators and all kinds of stuff wonder women of country all right let's talk about a group uh called armchair boogie they're from madison wisconsin which doesn't surprise me how we describe this it's a jam band Acoustic jam band. It's not a bluegrass band because there's uh, drums for one thing. Uh, but it's kind of a, a uh, bluegrass band, armchair boogie, because the lead instrument is a banjo. Banjo and guitar swapping lead lines. And the banjo player and the guitar player are swapping vocals. Uh, did I write down their names or do I have any notes on that? Anyway, Augie Darty is the... Augie Darty is the banjo player and maybe sings lead on most of these 
it's real loose jam band rough uh, Americana, propulsive and stuff. In some ways, it's not the kind of bluegrass or music that I favor because it's almost pointedly not fully crafted. Uh, but I tell you what, that's deceptive. It is fully crafted. It's meant to sound rough and loose, but it's incredibly precisely played, actually. And even though the vocals sound rough and loose, the harmonies come into play very nicely and everything. All right, so it also, as a jam band, they're a lot more focused and precise than most. I think it's really cool, the jam band interludes. They tend to move late in songs to, you know, a jam band coda or whatever. And that's often the best part of these songs, I think, too. Uh, Just playing is just rocking and bold, unconventional and stuff. All right. um, Let me just give you a sense of the sound uh, and the vibe from the this the name of the album is Hard Times and Deadlines. It's a ten song LP. Hard Times and Deadlines by Armchair Boogie. It's a very boogie uh, sound they've got too, which ain't exactly bluegrass, right? Sometimes bluegrass boogies, I guess. All right, this is their sound. Yeah, so that's the rock and roll kick kick in. Uh, the lyrics are fun, right? They're kind of unusual. Yeah, very personable. Like very like this is distinctive. Somebody's thinking a little different. Uh, there's a lot of uh, commentary on current American culture and economics. There's a lot about death on this album, but it's kind of fun because it's uh, you know it's straight up armchair boogie. That's an odd name for a band, though. Armchair Boogie? I mean, you're not an armchair while you're playing this on stage, man. I'm not sure why I came to Armchair Boogie. But if you are sitting in an armchair and you put this album on, I think your live will start twitching. And I just have a feeling like sort of a jam band concert situation. I'm not saying you should do psychedelics or anything, but this might really work in that context. Um... You know, I don't know, it's not pretty lights or whatever. It's something a lot more traditional, but uh, I think it might work. Um, I, I want to show a few things, like just the quality of this jam stuff, but let's try this song. The last, that was the first cut. How about the last cut? Boneyard by Armchair Boogie. Check the lyric on this. I think this rocks. And then I want to take it to the 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 like the jam coda because it I think it's unusual and beautifully played, so let's try uh, Boneyard by Armchair Boogie. My lips are chapped and I'm under attack by a couple of crackheads in the Home Depot parking lot. They're looking for money. Luckily for me, I got all my pennies. Tied up in this goddamn dream, I got all my pennies. 
Tied up in this goddamn dream, I'm headed to the boneyard. So are you. It's the same old story. That the following too close to, I've been cutting by the campfire. Holding for good. There's nothing wrong with me, I'm trying to be. I'm just getting beat up by a couple crackheads in the Home Depot parking lot. See, I think that's a good Americana lyric. I don't know about y'all. Uh, all right. Um, now, yeah, I just want to uh, take you to the the real playing vibe of these guys. Now, one thing that happens here is he starts scatting over his banjo. You know how people like in jazz, like George Benson or somebody, loves to like do 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 sing along with their guitar. Okay, I don't think I ever heard anyone do that on the banjo before. I'm not saying that they haven't or didn't. It just might not occur to the usual Scrug style player that that was even possible in a way, right? Like if you're doing Foggy Mountain Breakdown, what are you going to do? It's not really possible. But this guy does a scat along with his banjo, Augie, uh, that rocks pretty hard. Let's try this. Let's see. Where am I at? Um... Well, that might be an acquired taste or whatever, uh, but it's really cool, fun playing and just fun singing, bold in its way, right? Uh, lyrically, among other things, just like uh, here's real life now in a certain way, and it does have a lot of boogie. It really boogies. So I think that would be a fun concert, I feel like, with armchair boogie. Or just fun sitting at home in your armchair, boogieing. I ain't got no arms on my chair. All right, that's uh, CRISPR Roots 13. It would have been better if I didn't have a cold. Oh, man, I forgot to do the harp transition. Bye-bye. <laughs>